Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mount Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course, Statistics 101, Introduction to Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video provides a welcome to this course. Let's get started. First, let me welcome you to this Aspire Mountain Academy course. I'm glad you're here. Introduction to Statistics is an introductory survey course about statistics. Now, many schools offer, you know, such a course in introductory statistics, but they do so with a different name. For example, some schools call their course elementary statistics. But rest assured, much of the course content is the same. Different box, but what's inside the box is exactly the same. Now, many degree programs require students to take statistics because a working knowledge of statistics proves very useful for many fields of study. And, you know, we could see that these fields of study are very diverse. They range from psychology and sociology to medical science and healthcare to business to engineering. So, statistics has a very broad practical application. Now, notwithstanding that breadth, most first courses in statistics cover more or less the same material. At some schools, that first statistics class will be a 100 level course. For others, it may be a 200 level course. For still others, it may be a 300 level course. They may even call it by a different name. So don't get hung up on course numbers and, and names. You know, there's going to be some differences there, but rest assured, I mean, it, it's statistics. It's all pretty much the same stuff. The first statistics class I took in college was at the 300 level, but that 300 level course covered almost exactly the same material as the 100 level statistics course I would teach years later. The broad application of statistics allows for greater flexibility in how you integrate it into a degree program. Now, Aspire Mountain Academy does not offer degrees or certifications of any kind, but this course does align with the elementary statistics course provided by Pearson Education at many degree-granting higher education institutions in the United States. We'll talk more about that aspect in a future video. For right now, Let's start our journey together with an introduction to your instructor. You may be asking, what is it that qualifies me to teach this course? Well, that's a very excellent question. I graduated from the University of Idaho, where I double majored in metallurgical engineering and English. <laughs> yeah, there's more than a little bit of a story there. After graduation, I stayed to complete a master's degree in mechanical engineering and picked up another degree in Spanish along the way. Then I went out into the real world to start my engineering career. Eventually, a small company hired me as a materials engineer to perform metallography and materials testing. What is metallography? Well, you can see an example of that here in the center image. Here we have a bolt that has been cut in half vertically down its length and then placed in a type of epoxy resin. The metal surface is then ground and polished to a mirror finish, and an etchant, which is just a chemical reagent, is applied to reveal certain microstructural characteristics of the material. Now, in this particular example, the blue coloration you see around the edge of the bolt threads is case hardening. The depth of the case hardening can be measured as part of a quality control check on the manufacturing process. We can also use the mounted sample here to check for cracking, which in bolts typically appears in thread roots. If you look carefully at the two thread roots shown here, you can see some micro cracks. The other photo you see on the right is a tensile tester used to evaluate the mechanical strength of a material. So first you place a test sample in the two grips, and the bottom grip is stationary, so it doesn't move, but the top grip does move. So, so you're going to attach your sample there, and then you attach an extensometer so you can measure how quickly the sample pulls apart. And when everything's ready, you push the button, and the sample's pulled apart into two pieces. We then use data collected during the test to ascertain the tensile strength of the material. Now, I always love performing that those, you know, those kind of test. You know, it's like, what? You're going to pay me to break something? Oh, yeah, let's go, baby. Now, all these activities led to my involvement in a field called failure analysis. This is essentially CSI type work, but without the blood, the gore, and the cops. I loved performing this really fascinating work. It's also very lucrative because typically you have lawyers and insurance agents involved and their interest lies in finding out who to pursue in court or how to defend against a lawsuit or whether or not a claim should be honored. 
Now, in time, I accepted a position as a reliability engineer at an international Fortune 500 company. In this position, I made statistical models that predicted when huge natural gas turbines for the electric power generation industry would fail. You can get a sense for how big these units are by examining the two pic new pictures you see on your screen here. Now, on the left, a worker guides a crane carrying a portion of the cast iron casing for the compressor section of a gas turbine. What you see here is only about a third of the whole turbine itself. Now, on the right, you see a work worker. Here's a welder, and he's working on the transition piece section for a gas turbine. Again, this is only a portion of the whole unit. So these turbines are huge pieces of equipment. And this is where I came to love statistics. The models I created would predict fairly well when one of these huge power production units would fail. That's important because for every minute that one of these turbines is unexpectedly offline, the utility is losing tens of thousands of dollars. Yes, that is every minute. So to stop bleeding money, you want to get your unit back online as soon as possible. That and People generally expect the lights to turn on when they flip the switch. Now, the statistical models I created also helped utilities know when they should conduct inspections. If you don't inspect frequently enough, you run the risk of catastrophic failure and an unplanned outage with its huge associated costs. But you also want to avoid the other extreme of inspecting too frequently. You can't inspect the unit while it's running, and you can't make money as a power utility unless the unit is running when it should be. So where is that sweet spot in the middle? That's what, you know, the statistical models that I made indicated. It told us where that sweet spot was so we could conduct our inspections at the right intervals. Now, the contractual folks liked our model as well. When you buy a turbine for electric power production, you don't just buy a turbine. The company wants to sell you a maintenance agreement to go with it. So they continue to make money off of work they already did, and they can obtain valuable information that informs the design of the next generation of products. Now, the people writing these service contracts want to know how much can they give away to the customer and still make money. The statistical models that I made told this story also. Now, as much as I enjoyed this work, and I really did enjoy it, it didn't take long for me to tire of the cutthroat environment of corporate America. Eventually, I found myself in a new career in higher education, teaching at universities in the United States. And I started here two schools, uh, starting with the College of Western Idaho and Boise State University. Now, I've gone on to do other things, uh, teach at other schools, but this career change has had a very serious impact on my income, which has gone way down. But it's also had a serious impact on my job satisfaction, which has gone way up. I loved my career as an engineer, but I really loved my career as an educator. And in time, I started Aspire Mountain Academy to further my educational career. I just love what I do. And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.